Okay. In May 1866, John McKinlay and a party of 16 men arrived somewhere here on the East Alligator Bank, uh, exhausted and um, worn out after three or four months of uh, disastrous exploration across the Mary River and the Adelaide River floodplains. Uh, they were here to explore uh, the country from Escape Cliffs, the, uh, the first colony from South Australia that set, that set up on the banks of the, um, east of the Adelaide River. Uh, and they were, they were supposed to go from here, or from there, to here, through to the Liverpool River, and then through Arnhem Land as far as the Roper River before sailing back. They were to meet a ship called the Beatrice at Liverpool. Unfortunately, they left uh, in the, on the 16th of January, the day the wet season started, and they had six inches of rain on the first night once they crossed the Adelaide River. And it didn't stop raining for, for weeks and weeks and weeks. And as the floodplains rose, they could they got to the stage where they couldn't move their horses and their sheep and their cattle through the countryside. They, they were pushing sheep as a, as a mobile larder to eat. Some of the horses died from eating poisonous plants uh, and they ended up getting bogged in the mud and it was just too slow. So the whole party was stranded on an island in the middle of the floodplain for about two months and they couldn't go any, anywhere at all during that time. Finally, as the country dried out, the spear grass fruited and had their uh, seeds which dug into the skins of the sheep to, uh, they had to spend half their day shearing the sheep make, making sure there was nothing to catch the seeds on uh, and they were being eaten, they, they ran out of food fairly rapidly. By the time they got here, which was their, um, their last camp before uh, they had to make an escape back to escape cliffs, uh, they had run out of sheep, they would eaten half the horses and had to jerk them. Uh, and they'd left a lot of their gear in the bush behind us, up, up in the escarpment, up that way. And uh, we're at their wit's end. Uh, McKinley and his second in command, Robert Edmonds, um, were at loggerheads fighting over where they actually were. Edmonds was the, the navigator, so he rightly said this was the East Alligator River. But uh, McKinley thought he'd found another one and he wanted to, it to be known as the Alexandrina. Uh, they couldn't cross the river because of the mud, you see, see the huge amount of mud here. There's a lot of crocodiles, there's one on the beach just over there. A uh, very dangerous part of the river and they couldn't get their horses through the mud. And, and they were camped here and there was, the surrounding them were about 150 Gagaju or Guningu warriors who didn't want them here. And they were uh, being aggressive, they were lighting fires trying to burn the camp out. And McKinley's men at one point had to fire into the smoke and at least one person was shot because he turned up later uh, on a ship in Warrawee they were visiting a ship with, with bullet wounds that the um, sailors managed to patch up for him and he told the story of the affray here. Uh, nobody knows if anybody was killed though at that time. So they're in, they're in dire straits uh, with no energy left uh, but they did, still had 16 horses and 16 men and what they did in fact was kill all the horses and build a, uh, a pump out of uh, bush timber using parts of their saddles and metal parts of saddles to hold the, uh, the frame together and they skinned their horses and put the skins wrapped around the punt uh, big enough to hold 16 people and then they sailed it from here down through the, the, the meandering river right to the river mouth and back to Escape Cliffs uh, which took them six days and nights. The moment they landed at Escape Cliffs the boat fell apart so it was only, only just made it. It was made of green hide, rotting horse flesh, uh, and it was leaking badly, so they had six days of, of tipping water out. It was also smelling pretty badly. The story goes that it was smelt so bad they couldn't put their head beneath the gunnels. Uh, it was just disgusting. They were being followed by sharks and crocodiles everywhere they went because of the smell, so they couldn't sleep properly. They were on guard the whole time. At one point, they were blown eight miles out to sea and managed to paddle back the next day. Uh, but they made it. They got back to Escape Cliffs and lived to tell another uh, tale of, of exploration. It's probably one of the greatest survival stories or adventure stories in uh, this part of the world in exploration, and I think it makes a good movie. Done. Boy.